EcoBoost Engine 44 AAA has come home. After 165,000 miles of severe abuse, engineers at Ford will examine this engine part by part to see just how well it held up. First, the engineers put it back on the dynamometer and find the engine, even after all it's been through, is still getting the same horsepower and torque as it did when we first started. It makes torque of uh, 420 foot-pounds at 2,500 RPM and peak power of 365 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, working as good as a brand new engine. It's going to get shipped off to the North American Auto Show where we're going to do a live teardown of this engine. Good morning, everybody. What we're going to do today is a, is a first for us at an auto show. We're going to tear this engine down real time and live in front of you all. 24 hours of NASCAR was uh, stressing the, you know, the, all the base engine parts. The turbochargers were spinning up and down. One of the reasons uh, we know this thing is still functioning well, and I know there are a lot of questions about whether these turbos would really live, is like we said before, we brought this back in the dynamometer lab and we're able to generate the same foot pounds and uh, horsepower, which if this thing wasn't working right, wouldn't have happened. Hauling the logs was really about the low speed torque, really stressed the bottom end of the engine, the crankshaft, the bearings, and the pistons. Crank end play then is just a measure of uh, sort of the actual thrust between the engine and the transmission. So there's a couple of thrust bearings that hold the crank in place. What they're going to measure here is how much wear we have on those thrust bearings. 0.12. 0.12. Still within our new build specification. Another good indication that this engine has a lot of life left in it. That's just extreme torture. You're running the high cylinder pressure, high oil temps, high coolant temps. On top of that, that engine's getting shaken all over the place in a very, very nasty environment. We need a robust uh, piston to be able to handle all that. We have a uh, molly coat to uh, reduce friction. And that's one of the first things we take a look at on a piston like this is what the wear pattern looks like and how much is gone. And if you can see this, there's uh, really not much of the molly coat gone. We'll go ahead and take the rings and make sure that they spin freely. If the rings get stuck, you're going to wind up with low compression, low performance, fuel economy suffers, as well as uh, oil consumption would go up. This piston looks great. Last thing that we're going to have a look at is condition of the cylinder bores. We'll uh, measure the bore and actually measure the wear. When you go ahead and look through this bore, all the cross hatch is there. The cross hatch is critical for oil consumption. You want some oil on the cylinders to lubricate the rings going up and down in the piston, but you want to be able to control it. And really looking at this thing, it looks great. And uh, you guys will be able to come up here and take a look yourselves. So that's the teardown. Feel free to come up, take pictures, and just ask any questions you have. So thank you very much for participating, and thanks for being part of it. Hundred fifty thousand miles on the dyno. Four additional torture episodes. The engine is still in its new build specifications, so we could easily get another hundred fifty thousand miles out of it. It took Ford engineers less than 35 minutes to tear down EcoBoost engine 44 AA, something 165,000 miles of torture couldn't do.